Welcome to the 290 Mo Podcast. I appreciate your time. If you could, introduce yourself for my viewers and listeners. All right. Hey, y'all. Hey, I'm Sunshine Lombre. Um, I'm a poet, a dancer, and even curator. Yeah. Okay. That's dope. Um, so I, I always like to start from the beginning. I like to get the full story. But but with you, I want to start with the name. You have an mm-hmm. a, 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 a interesting name. It stands out. Um, what, 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 where do we get the name? Where did I get the name? Okay, yeah. Um, let's see. 2015, I dropped out of college and, um... I started like, okay, so I was a math major at the time, math major, physics and shit, Mm -hmm. but I was just always loving dance and poetry. So um, yeah, 2015, I dropped out and I just started uh, gigging and whatnot. And um, I was experimenting with different names, but um, people just kept referencing light, like, um, yeah, call me a ball of energy. Oh, you you know, just referencing sunshine a lot. Um, yeah, a little ball of sunshine. And it started off with, like, old ladies just calling me sunshine, just like they be calling people sugar and honey and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Over time, I just kept noticing people calling me sunshine. And, and um, after a while, I just accepted it, took it on. Um, Lombre is my legal last name. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's a misspelling of Lombre. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm part Filipino and the Spanish uh, colonized the Filipino people. So a lot of them got Spanish last names. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Okay. <laughs> so back to the beginning. Wait, where, where yeah. you from? Where you grew up? Where am I from? Um, yeah, yeah. So, man, I grew up on a lot of different areas, like on the south and southeast mm-hmm. side of Chicago. Mm-hmm. So, um... Yeah, I lived in the back of the yards for some years. I lived in Hyde Park for a few years. But for the most part, I lived um, off of 79th and Cottage. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So that's like the longest that I've lived. Mm -hmm. I was over there for like like 12 years maybe or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, And now I live in South Shore. Mm -hmm. So, so we just say the South Side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, for sure, much. for sure. So, so uh, talk to me a little bit about your experiences uh, growing up out South. Was it normal, pretty good, experience anything tragic? You know what I'm saying? What was your, everybody have different experiences. What was yours for on, on the South Side of Chicago coming up? Yeah. Um, there's always, like, for me, it's always been a whole lot of tragedies around. But, um luckily a lot of them weren't close to me Mm -hmm. so like when i was staying um yeah yeah yeah. like when i was staying in the back of the yards like our neighbors used to have dog fights and the dogs would like fight to death Mm -hmm. you know so sometimes it would smell like uh dead animals and it'd be like pieces of animals around the yard and shit Mm -hmm. um yeah yeah and living off Sunday night there was like a crack house uh like right behind our apartment so they would steal stuff like either off our porch or climb like bust through the windows and take mm-hmm. shit you get um, a little extra yeah 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 be crackheads right. you know it's it's just part of it right. we're good crackheads it's just yeah 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 mm-hmm. um yeah i feel like crackheads just always been a part of my life like mm-hmm. even I don't know, over time, like, I've started having less mishaps with crackheads. Like, I remember one morning I was uh, on my way to school. Um, I went to school at Lindblom, so it was, like, an hour on the bus to get from east side to Inglewood. But, um, yeah, yeah, this crackhead, she stopped me and started telling me about how I look just like her daughter. And she misses her daughter so much. And she kissed me on the forehead and gave me some money, like a old lady. I don't even know. Mm. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So lots of crackheads. But the beautiful thing is, there's always been a lot of arts around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, <coughs> there's, yeah, yeah. I've always like had friends that just love to write, whether that was rapping or poetry or whatever. And I knew some people that liked to draw. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always been some mishaps. Like, man, I remember like before. In the early part of the pandemic, a car crashed through my apartment building. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's just always something, but... Didn't, it didn't go, like, through your living room, did it? Um, Not my living room. I lived mm-hmm. on the third floor at the time. Okay. But um, it, it went through the first floor's living room, like, destroyed their whole everything. Mm-hmm. And um, But my pipes were messed up. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it was a whole you dig. And Helen niggas in the building kept getting, like, killed. For sure. Um, but anyway. Re- regular nigga shit. Yeah. Regular, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. But, um, but, but, well, I hope you feel comfortable because you out west. And I call the, the main street 
it, we're not too far from. I call that like crackhead central. You know what I'm saying? It's, all good. it's Madison Street, so you should feel comfortable. And I'm just talking shit, but uh, I knew where I was coming. It's okay. <laughs> coming up, growing up, you know what I'm saying? Amongst uh, out south and in, in the in the environment that you were in, um, what what kind of aspirations did you have? Like doctor, lawyer, teacher? Like what did you want to be coming up? Yeah, um, growing up, I just always knew. I, for longest, I just always wanted to be a dancer. But I never knew of any dancers that were actually, like, eating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that were actually, like, yeah, doing well. Like, yeah, reaching the dream and whatnot. Just mm -hmm. watching music videos and whatnot. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then over time, like, I knew I loved poetry. But I didn't also never knew anybody that was actually, like, eating well and living comfortable off, you know, poetry. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, in the last few years, I've been lucky just to slowly start meeting people that are... Um, not just chasing the dream, but fucking living it. Mm -hmm. And um, they've been inspiring me. And now I'm doing pretty decent, you know, paying bills and whatnot off my art. So. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get to, I'm sure. That's dope. That's dope. So so coming up, you know what I'm saying, did you ever think, you know what I'm saying, that you would be, like, making money off your art? So at the time, did you, like, try other things? Like, did you try your hand at, at working in a factory or, or doing other things? Or Yeah. Um... Man, so yeah, like, eh, I went to college for math and physics because I was like, okay, there's money in that, mm, for you sure. know. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. When I dropped out in 2015, I worked a lot of different jobs. Um, I worked in restaurants. I worked at Wrigley Field in the concession stands. <laughs> I've I worked. I did, huh? No, I worked at White Sox in the uh, concession stands. Okay, I've done was, that too. I was a porter. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've I've worked in a lot of fucking concessions. Um, I've done um what is it, where you have the trays like banquet serving. Mm -hmm. Um, man, I have worked in a warehouse packaging shit. I've worked so many odd jobs. I've worked in embassy suites, um, as a breakfast buster just cleaning tables. Mm -hmm. I've had so many shit jobs. Um as, as, as we all yeah yeah i've been a receptionist that's a cuter job but still mm -hmm. not it um yeah so i want to ask you about the physics is that like uh -huh. what exactly is physics because once you get past counting money i don't know what's going on so what exactly is physics and did you actually enjoy that or was it purely because you you saw monetary value in it yeah 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 so i actually really did like physics mm. um Physics, okay, so you, you kind of, you already know math, like basic math. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and physics is like the calculus behind a lot of things that work. Like, it could be like the physics between like... And then like time and space and shit? That is part of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Time and space is a part of it. And it's also like, you need physics to try to like uh, figure out how to make engines. Mm -hmm. Like, how can you make an engine so hot, but it doesn't melt the actual material that it is mm -hmm. you know or it could be like oh how you can calculate how fast something falls you know just mm -hmm. from the dislike the location that it fell from and where it's going and how heavy it is it's like the physics is basically like the math to calculate anything physical mm -hmm. so um yeah, yeah 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 physics is basically just the math behind anything physical you know like it could be you might use math, you know, calculus and physics to figure out like the how to structure this tripod, you know, so that it's a certain weight to hold up the middle part without being so heavy that it pulls everything down. You know, it's um, yeah, like knowing the capacity of uh, different ends points like, oh, this part can only handle so much weight, but then this part can only handle so much weight, but this, so, yeah, so it's also, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. So, I know, did I, that make any sense? To them? I, I told you, once you get past counting money, okay, okay. I, I gotta watch a YouTube video about it, but I kind of familiar with it because I'm a fan of um a few physicists. I think okay. that's how you say it. Uh, sure. I forget his name, black guy. Oh, Neil. Neil Tyson. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I watch his videos all the time on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's another one Joe Rogan interviews. Okay, okay, I'm okay. definitely interested in the black holes and the mass and dark matter and all that shit. But yeah. that's dope. So one more question before we move on. Sure. Um, 
when you were in these rooms and these classes, um, what was the demographic like? Did you see other people that like look like you and have backgrounds like you, like being from the south side of Chicago, or was it like a eyeball situation where you was in rooms and like the only one, you know what I'm saying, similar? Or or is the demographic changing now where we have more young people, more people of color in those fields? Man, um, I went through huge culture shock when I went to college. Mm. Um, yeah, I went to Urbana Champaign, University of Illinois Urbana Champaign, and um, yeah, I was definitely the only like either yeah only black woman or one of two. Like there would be like a few black men, like maybe three out of a room of two hundred mm-hmm. people. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was mostly um, like East Asian and South Asian, so a lot of Chinese, Taiwanese, Indian, Pakistani um, men. And then, yeah, it was like even few white men. Like I was seeing mostly, yeah, Asians. And um, yeah, also in college, it was a lot of suburban, like the black people I met, a lot of them were suburban, but just felt hood as hell. And hearing me talk, they just never felt like I was black enough hooded. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, I always hear that about college, especially in Southern Illinois. I'd be like, it'd be a lot of like, you know what I'm saying, culture banging and shit going on. Yeah. I'm like, man, these suburban black folk telling me I'm not black enough, but they the, ain't seen what I seen off 79th to 63rd. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Does, yeah. does that affect the learning in any way? Like, was it easy to stay on track? Did that have anything to do with you leaving early? Or, you know what I'm saying, were you able to separate the two? Um, I feel like it was hard getting support. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Feeling comfortable like having study sessions with people. Um, especially like with some of the students. Um English was a second language for them. So they felt more comfortable, you know, having sessions with other Chinese speakers, other um Ur- Urdu speakers or yeah, people that spe- yeah, people that just spoke their language honestly. Um Yeah, yeah. I did have a few instructors that were racist against black folk. And that was, like, the hardest. They would just give me zeros on exams when it's like, that don't make no sense at all. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, man. Um, yeah, yeah. I've had some really racist professors that were picking on me from day one, like, before I even took a test. Mm-hmm. So that that did add to my um, one, to, yeah, me leaving with the racism. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I think mm-hmm. times are getting better. Mm-hmm. So. For sure, for sure. That's dope. So, so ultimately leaving school, did you have like a plan? Did you have a goal in mind? Did you just like, I just want to get out this environment and I'll figure it out later? Like, what was the, the blueprint leaving, leaving? Yeah, for me, um, I knew, I started to know like a lot of uh, agency dancers that were getting booked with Nicki Minaj and Rihanna and big names, you know, Cardi B, whatever. Mm-hmm. What exactly is an agency dancer before I cut you off? Sure, yeah, yeah. So agency dancer, like... Um, in order to get the big gigs, like to dance with Beyonce, Cardi B, whatever, mm-hmm. um, they don't typically just have, they typically have, um, dance agencies that book dancers for big gigs like mm-hmm. that or yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can't just kind of like a union kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, like some, just like some rappers have agents and whatnot that book them shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So dancers have agents too. Um, and most of the agents and agencies are in L.A. Mm-hmm. Models have agents. A lot of different yeah, sure. creatives have agents, yeah. Mm-hmm. So did you, do you need it? Did you need any, like, um, certifications to, to get involved with that? Or is it just purely audition-based? What Like, how do you get, you know what I'm saying, involved necessarily? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, most of the major dance agencies are in L.A. So, um, and they do have auditions like a lot of them have like two auditions a year Mm -hmm. um so my main plan was um to train really hard take as many dance classes as i could for a year and then move to la and just start auditioning 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 um yeah but that did not go as planned (laughs) (laughs) did did you ever make it to la i visited Mm -hmm. um yeah i visited yeah, yeah yeah i visited la and uh yeah i started to get to know like where i need to audition to and stuff like that mm-hmm. but um during the process of me like training and training and training um i had a really bad knee injury and i lost my ability to walk <laughs> from dancing 
Yeah, so yeah, so I was there was a period of time where I was working four jobs. I was on two dance teams. Four jobs? How yeah. the fuck is that even possible? I know. That's yeah. insane. I'll be looking at my one job. I wake up every morning trying not to call off. God yeah. damn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was working four jobs, uh two dance teams. I was choreographed for drag queens. I was doing a lot of stuff and not eating enough or sleeping enough and my body just was falling apart. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, do you remember exactly what the injury was, and was it like a, uh, you can't, you're not supposed to dance no more type of thing? Just let it heal. What there was a surgery involved? Like, like what exactly happened? Yeah. Um. So it was like some days of my knees just burning, but I just kept pushing, kept pushing, and then I started noticing my knees would make these knocking sounds when I'd walk, like. Like, yeah, and then I just felt my kneecaps moving around were weird. So anyhow, after a while, I finally got it checked out, and uh, they told me I wore the cartilage out of my knees, so mm. it was just bone-on-bone bone grinding. Like the basketball players. <laughs> yeah, 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 like a lot of basketball players. Yeah, yeah, so they never told me that. Um, I can't dance no more, but they definitely told me to keep off my feet. So I was on crutches and knee braces, and, I, yeah, I was mm. bedridden. I couldn't mm. do anything. Okay. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. You know, I'm I'm glad you up walking today. You know, what yeah, saying? yeah, me too. Dancing today. You know what I'm saying? So that's great. Yeah. Um. Uh, with dancers, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of different kinds of dancers. A lot of different kind of dances. Um, what kind of dancers do you do? And do you consider yourself a professional? In any one, or is it you fluent in many? And if you could, could you run those down for us? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I mainly specialize in femme styles, so sensual movement, heels, vogue, jazz, um, belly dancing. <laughs> yeah. And what makes that, you said film style? Femme, yeah. Femme? What yeah. makes that femme? What is femme? Femme, like feminine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. I just had a, okay, so th- those are femme style. Mm-hmm. Is that where you started at, or is that where you, you know what I'm saying, found your foot in it and got a passion for it? I feel like where I started, it was just like whatever was trendy, like little club dances, lean with it, rock with it, you know, doing the 40s or whatever. That's probably yeah. the last dance I ever did. The lean with it, rock with it. And it's, yeah, you ain't been dancing. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, whatever. That's where I started, was just doing whatever the little, like, cute dances were. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Over time, just got more into the film dances, and that's where, yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. So, with the dancing, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, you, you had a, a, a injury. But another thing I heard you mention is you, you signed up for different dance schools. You know what I'm saying? So when you sign up for these dance schools, what exactly are you looking to learn? Like, is it, do you not just know how to dance and, and you good? Or do you constantly have to learn new things from new people? Um. Yeah, you do have to constantly keep learning. Because it's like the same way rap is always changing, Mm -hmm. you know, um, dance is always changing. So, like, what we consider hip hop is constantly changing, like, as far as dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Music, too. Yeah, it's music, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what, like, yeah, like all these TikTok dances and, like, it's not like, yeah, there's just always new stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you have to always keep up on the new trends and whatnot. And also, like, to be an industry dancer, which is what I'm going for, Mm -hmm. um, I. When they teach you these routines, like, okay, so, like, a lot of those gigs where, like, maybe Cardi has, like, 40 girls on stage, Mm -hmm. they are not typically having long rehearsals like that. They might have a few, but, like, the choreographers are teaching everything really, really quick and maybe once, you know? Like, on average, what do you think rehearsal time, how much rehearsal time is spent on, like, a Cardi B Super Bowl performance? Man, it's it's tough to say. Like some choreographers might give the ladies a few weeks, but I don't, some people honestly will do everything in one day. The transitions and everything. What? Yeah, yeah. I like, couldn't be no dance. I even on stage. He's like, what's wrong? <laughs> he don't yeah. know none of the steps. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, yeah, like there was a time that uh, Rihanna was on the Super Bowl. I think maybe like last year or something like that, or maybe the year before. And um, people were definitely like going in on a few of the dancers that were not knowing what they was doing. Damn, they just learned to like, dance today. Yeah, 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 it's like 200 of them. Right. You know? Yes, yeah, so I have no clue how long their rehearsals were, but like I do know some people that um they were they were given a video to learn from, mm-hmm. and then they had to just come mm-hmm. <laughs> day of and right. yeah, and yeah, you yeah. was practicing in, in this dance studio. Now you out on this football field. 
trying to find your mark. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. So I don't know, yeah. Mm-hmm. So so also with, with dancing, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, you said at the beginning growing up you didn't know of anybody who was eating off dancing, but now I'm pretty sure you're familiar with, with the dancers in the industry. I think the only person I know that came up off dancing was um, J-Lo. I oh. think J Lo was a dancer. Yes, yeah. she was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 it. so now you know what I'm saying. In the age of social media, everything is is at the at your fingertips. Um, are you a fan of any dancers now that that we might be uh, familiar with, or might be you know what I'm saying, um, a top dancer in the industry, or or if you guys even have those? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, man, there's so many. Um, Ali Janelle, she's a lot of people's favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. She's worked with Nicki Minaj. Um, she's worked, she just came off Beyonce's, uh, Renaissance tour. Mm -hmm. Um, man, she's done a lot of work with a lot of black, um, singers and rappers. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's really great. Any Um, personal favorites? Oh, like people I personally know? No, just people you personally, you know what I'm saying, watch, you know what I'm saying, check out their work, maybe a fan of yourself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and no, I definitely love Aaliyah Janelle. I love Kayla Brenda. Um, she's danced with uh, Trey Songs um, and quite a few others. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Um, I used to be a huge fan of uh, Danielle Polanco. Mm-hmm. Um, she was the dancer that did, like, Touch with Omarion. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that old video. What? Doom, doom. That's my <laughs> era. You steady naming these songs from my era. I know all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so she was the girl that was in that video. She did the step up video. She was in there. Mm-hmm. Um, she's also danced with Beyonce, of course. The hell, and people dance with Beyonce. Um, she had a million shows. Shit. She had a million shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom, people's kids, kids, and dance with her probably gonna show you by now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, I could probably spend hours just listing mm-hmm. dope dancers and For yeah. Sure. Okay, so before we move on to the poetry, yeah. um, what would you say is the highlight of your dancing career so far? Like. What would you say was your personal highlight? Big, small, um, it could be an invite, it could be a, a performance, whatever it is. What would you say? Yeah. Okay. Um. Cool, 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 cool. I think one of my favorite gigs... I have two, but okay. One of my favorite kicks as far as like pay was mm. this one uh, situation I had uh, for Mardi Gras at a casino in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Mm-hmm. Middle of fucking nowhere. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for uh, Mardi Gras, they, had, they were booking dancers and they were looking for showgirls, you know. So they had like the big feathers and, you know, the sequins and all the shits. And um, yeah, it was a beautiful situation where they just let us freestyle throughout the casino once an hour, every hour for like 12 hours or something like that. So it was a long day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like 10 minutes of dancing, freestyling um, just every hour for like 12 some hours. Um, but yeah, they paid Every us- hour for 12 <laughs> Yeah. every hour on the hour every hour on the hour yeah yeah for like 12 hours but uh they paid us 800 dollars a day mm-hmm. which is really nice um for two days so yeah uh they gave us hotel rooms they gave us a hundred dollars a day for food at their little like restaurants and whatnot Man, so it I'm was spending yeah three dollars on gonna give me a fat dollar a fat dollar holla put the rest of that money in my pocket <laughs> Yeah, man. Oh, surely. Yeah. So, uh, I can't. I know I said I don't know that's the last dancing question, but I wanted to ask about the the fitness part of it. You know what I'm saying? Do you did you work? Do you work out to stay in fit for dancing, or is dancing the workout? Um, for me, uh, dance mainly is the workout, but I do have to do different things to try to keep my flexibility up and my strength up. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So I can um. Just different things so like I can make sure that I can prevent myself from hurting myself when I fall or mm-hmm. yeah, just, yeah, like make sure I can carry my own weight easier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, for sure, for sure. That's dope. Let's get into the poetry. So poetry, when what does poetry first, you know what I'm saying, become a part of, of your life? If you can remember. Do you remember that first instant? Man, um, the first song I ever sung was Gin and Juice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when I Gin and Juice, so, um, I've always just loved rap. And uh, I, yeah, I just love rap. The storytelling, the flow, the rhythms. And 
Yeah, yeah. And just also just living in the communities where people were, you know, mm-hmm. ciphering on the corners and shit. Um, but yeah, yeah. I never could write a beat, like, mm-hmm. for real, for real. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And I just love reading books and stories. And um, But I didn't see myself as a book writer either. But when I first started learning poetry, like my Angelo and the Classics, like in fifth and sixth grade, that felt like my happy medium between rap and um, storytelling and just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started writing poetry in 2006. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember what the subject matter? Because I, I hear so many poems and they could be about anything or anyone. Do you remember the subject matter of, of your first couple works, probably? Yeah, um, my first couple works. I remember one was just about like trying to just be true to you. That was what my first one. And then the other ones were like just me trying to understand death. <laughs> We all go through that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just writing about death and um, yeah, yeah, trying to find the beauty in it since yeah, at the time it's just all around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. When doing poetry, how much is it? Like you just named some real, some real topics. How much? How much of that is do you bring from your real life into it, or is it strictly art? Um. I feel like I do write a lot from my, mm. yeah, I do write a good amount from my own personal experience, but uh, I could also just like see something happen to somebody else and write a whole you dig about it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, I guess, um, I don't know, it might be like 50-50, like me mm-hmm. seeing other people's stuff and writing about it and then okay. myself, yeah. For sure, dope. Um like with the dance and with poetry, it's a lot of different styles. Um, a lot of people do it different ways. Um, if there's a, a type of style or or a way that you do poetry, is there one? And if there is, uh, could you share it with us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so my style, I am a spoken word poet, mm-hmm. and I tend to do a lot of stuff with music. So um, oftentimes I will either have instrumentals with my poetry or I'll have a live musician with it. Um, And my style of spoken word leans a little bit more towards slam poetry. Um, Yeah, I'm also very inspired by slam poets. And yeah, every now and then you'll see, like, hear me rap a little bit. Like, I'll ride the beat for a little bit, but then I'll lose it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have some moments with some bars, but yeah. Mm -hmm. What exactly is slam poetry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So slam poetry um, is basically just like... Like just like battle rap is a style of rap, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. So slam poetry is poetry battles, mm-hmm. <laughs> poetry competitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like with two people on stage against each other. They not really. Just but the thing whoever is, had the best verse. Yeah, it's oftentimes it'll be like a battle. Oh well, a competition where it's like four people, or sometimes it could be ten people, etc. But they usually go on like one at a time. Mm. Um, it's not exactly like that rap battle shit where you're like face to face with someone, mm. but similar. Um, with, with poetry slams, you get uh, scored like out of ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of harsh sometimes with poetry slams because you'll have somebody that traveled ten hours to get to the competition, and they tell them this heartfelt story about how they lost their whole family in a in a fire, a house fire, and then a judge will be like three, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's like damn. They didn't travel, but anyhow, that's life. Yeah, that's <laughs> life. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So it's a style of like competition poetry. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So it tends to be a, a bit more like intentional, aggressive. Slam poetry is the type of shit that'll make you change religions. It'll make you change a po- make a politician want to change policies on some shit. Make you cry like, and it's also like three minutes or less. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The goal is like to make um, somebody feel something heavy in their chest Mm -hmm. in three minutes or less. With with trying with 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 you all trying to invoke those feelings, is it ever personal between the artists? Like, is there? I mean, is there ever any beef between the poets? Like somebody like really this really this poem really for you? You ain't gonna feel this one. Is it ever like that? Or is it strictly people keep it art? Uh, yeah, sometimes they do get a bit more heated. Like, sometimes you will hear a poet complaining about specific people. <laughs> you know, they might stay complaining about specific people in the room. 
Um, some a poet might be mad about how they got scored last week and write a piece about that. <laughs> um, yeah, some people could be talking about their exes and their exes in the room. It could be a lot of different things. <laughs> For sure. Um, with poetry, you know what I'm saying? I got to ask you a poetry fact real quick. Do, do they snap? At, is that a thing or is that just TV? No, people do snap. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So is that like, can you clap? Like if I start clapping, is everybody going to turn around and shit like that? Um, It depends on the poetry situation. Like if you go to a poetry reading, mm-hmm. you know, where the people are not spoken word artists, they might look at you where if you clap. Mm-hmm. Um, But if you go into a spoken word event and yeah, spoken word events tend to also be more diverse. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you will see a lot more black folk, Hispanic, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll hear people clap and scream and, and like with slam poetry, the audience goes crazy. Mm-hmm. So sometimes they throw their head at the, you know, they just, yeah, yeah, yeah. People will scream, go off, poet, come on, give me my lot. You know, just saying whatever. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. And like, for me, I like crowd engagement. You know, I like when Thanks. the audience feed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Especially like sometimes for me, like as a poet, like trying to, of course, make money off the shit and trying to like book shows. Sometimes people put me in shows with drill rappers and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, which is cool. But the thing's like drill rap has a lot of energy you know so i had to like compete and make sure my poetry has a lot of energy to keep people engaged you know because they just had the, you know these beats doom, 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 you know just right. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so um damn i lost where i was it, it's, it's <laughs> i do it all the time also with the snapping is uh-huh. do you know where that comes from is that something way before your time and would you you know the myth on how that started or, or why why it's done Honestly, don't know. I don't know why that's done, to be honest. I'm going to YouTube that for the night is over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to figure that out, too. I do not know why poetry does the snaps instead mm-hmm. of claps, honestly. Um, but, yeah, I can't tell you that Poetry Slam started in Chicago, though. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poetry competition, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Because that's exactly what I want to ask you ne- next. We kind of talked about it a little bit before we started recording. Mm-hmm. But I want to ask you about um, the Chicago poetry scene. Mm-hmm. Um I had somebody, uh, it wasn't recently, somebody, but somebody did mention to me um, that they weren't familiar with the uh, Chicago poetry scene. So um, I always I always try to keep my eye peeled. And I never personally seen nothing myself until today. Um, until today I saw something and then I was researching on your Instagram page and I saw that you, you're always doing something. So um, what's the Chicago poet scene like you know what i'm saying is it is it is it a big one is it small is it everybody knows everybody what what's it like yeah yeah um the poetry scene is very abundant which is beautiful it's so abundant that a lot of people don't know about each other so yeah yeah, yeah. so you'll have you know man there's a lot of white scenes there's a lot of black scenes there's a lot of black over 40 scenes there's uh the black over 40 west side ones versus the south side ones um yeah there's some east asian spots um there's the yeah it's so many different styles there's the haikuists there's the people that like the uh the collegiate you know like university studying like the ancient poetry from greece and shit like there's so many different communities of poetry um, which is really cool. So if you're trying to get busy in the poetry scene, there's so many things to do. So, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's always like, if you even like hashtag Chicago poetry, you're going to find a lot of things. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether on Instagram or searching on Eventbrite or yeah. And honestly, like once you get to know three poets, you going to probably be busy cause they doing a lot of different things and they're going to tell you about a lot. Of things. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Speaking about meeting poets and knowing poets, you know what I'm saying? One thing I noticed about, I've been doing podcasts since COVID. And one thing I noticed, you know what I'm saying, even coming from, you know what I'm saying, out on the streets and shit, is in every industry, it's like clicks. You know what I'm saying? Everybody still got their clicks. Everybody still got their beefs. And poetry is everybody friends. You know what I'm saying? Is is it the over 40, you know what I'm saying? Is y'all not allowed at the over 40 events? You know what I'm saying? Is is what, What's it like? Man, um... Yeah, some venues you definitely can't get into until, like until you forty over, and that's some that that's one of the few things I don't like. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I do feel like a lot of, like, there's not enough um, south side clubs and bars that 21 and up can go to, mm. you know? We have, like, the promontory and, like, a few others, but, mm -hmm. yeah. But anyhow, um, yeah, a lot of people don't know of each other, to be real. A lot of people don't know of each other because it's so easy to just get, just stay busy in your clique. Um yeah yeah a lot of people don't know about each other you know a lot of people that um like for example like bobo's emporium um robin bobo she's a great amazing poet and so is her husband and they have three venues on the, um yeah south southeast side you know and they have poetry events and all sorts of events at each one you know and people could just stay busy with bobo's emporium alone mm -hmm. and not only do they have events but other people have events there and it's like they might some people that might be regulars there might not know about the Chicago Poetry Center, you know. And honestly, like I've been doing poetry events for years, and I never even knew about the Chicago Poetry Foundation, you know. Like the Chicago Poetry Foundation, they created Poetry Magazine, which is like the Poetry Magazine, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just called Poetry Magazine, and like poetry, the Poetry Magazine and the Poetry Foundation, they fund a lot of poetry programming, not just throughout the city but throughout the country. They got all these grants and stuff that I never even knew about because. I don't know, like, a lot of poets just that I knew of didn't know of it. And it's like, yeah, a lot of the poets that uh, they have do shows are authors that have been pushing out books for decades and decades. And, um, yeah, I feel like for the most part, it is pretty welcoming. There are a lot of people that are bougie and because everybody got their own preferences. You know, like, some people like the more aggressive slam style poetry where people trying to make folk cry mm -hmm. yeah like slam poetry oh, so they try to make folk cry <laughs> yeah like slam poetry can be a bit of like of a trauma olympics honestly oh my god yeah 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 like i so it's like does that mix like you got people in here drinking alcohol and then somebody probably just brought up some dark deep memories from one of the guests like do the guests ever like just bust out crying or run out the room or because i i've heard so many poems before and it just be like you know it could be it could be rough you know what i'm saying yeah man yeah it can definitely be rough it could definitely be rough there are with slam poetry a lot of people do have to leave the room um with the shits like i remember my sister i took her to a slam competition of mine in baltimore and a few people just started to talk saying um talking about how they've dealt with abuse you know from their parents just just yeah 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 just getting abandoned and abused and she had to leave the room because it was just getting to be too much mm -hmm. you know and um yeah yeah there was a, lot, a period where i was doing a lot of poems um on sexual assault awareness and whatnot and people would often have to leave and some people would just come to tears and yeah <laughs> i'm glad you walked into that because my next question was yeah. with your poetry what feelings do you try to invoke um, out the audience or do you is it always just you know what I'm saying a personal feeling whatever the audience takes from it that's what they get from it hmm. um it really depends on the day um like some days I might be feeling really awful about different things going on in Palestine or the Congo or Haiti and I really will make some poems about that to try to inspire people to try to take action to either donate or spread awareness or reach out to politicians and write letters um yeah 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 so sometimes I, I try to inspire write poems that'll inspire people to take action um sometimes whether it's like in other countries or just in the fucking neighborhoods you know because it's so easy for people to just be so focused on you know work family themselves you know that they don't you know, they not seeing people, someone like a few doors down are struggling, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I usually try to make people feel inspired to take action and um, yeah, try to feel more grounded and connected. I think that's like my main thing is overall, like trying to make people feel more connected, whether that's to themselves, to community, to their bodies. Like I had like in the pandemic when we were like hella isolated. Um, I went through a whole like phase of just writing a whole lot of erotic poetry because we weren't touch well we weren't supposed to be. we weren't supposed to be touching each other we were supposed to like stay six feet six feet apart and keep our mouths to ourselves and all the things so um, yeah 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 a lot of people were depressed and um, not feeling connected and of course needing 
sensuality in their lives in whatever form that is and mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> I wanted to ask you, um, I'm glad you brought it up about your, uh, I don't know if you would call it considering political views, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and your support of pa Palestine and the Congo and um, where else did you mention? Haiti. And, and Haiti. There's so many things yeah, that's what place, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chicago, you know what I'm saying? Chicago, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For sure. But um, what I want to know is, um, you know, I don't know how old you are, and you don't have to share if you don't want to, but... um. A lot of people, I'm 32, so a lot of people, even like my my friends and my group, they don't they're not familiar with anything about Palestine or what's going on in Ukraine and like that. So, how you know what I'm saying? How do you get involved? What are what are, what are, what does it you know what I'm saying? Um, impact you that makes you want to be involved or or even just speak up for for these atrocities that's going on around the world. Okay, you asked me, how do I get involved and what inspires me to get involved? Yeah, like, how did you get involved? Like, how do you, because, well, basically, I don't know nobody but me that watch the news, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so, right. how do you stay yeah. informed? How did you even know anything was going on? Um, we we'll start there. Okay. Um, hmm. All right. I guess. Uh, all right, all right, let's see. I'm just like, like, all right, so I guess maybe it, it might be because, like, my background is so... Anyway, so, like, I guess, like, with, I don't know, my neighborhood having, like, I don't know, in my neighborhood, like, growing up, I didn't have a lot of resources, so I would often just wander around the city just trying to get into things, finding things to get into. So over time, I just slowly started to get to know other people of different backgrounds, whether that's Arab or Latino or... Yeah, um, West African, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So over time, I just started uh, meeting people of different backgrounds and just hearing their stories and different things. Um, and also just through the arts, I slowly start meeting more people of different backgrounds and that would just slowly, um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And also a lot of, um, a lot of poets, especially slam poets are activists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of the people that be uh, trying to make folk like change policies in three minutes or make somebody cry, a lot of them are like activists that be marching down the street screaming. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, and just hearing about people hurting. Like anytime I hear about something going on, I want to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if I know you. Yeah. Does having those having um having those views um ever cause any conflict? You know what I'm saying? Like um. Like, you see the protest every day, you know what I'm saying, on the college campuses. You see them on the streets, you know what I'm saying? They shut down O'Hare one day. So, it has it ever affected you in your everyday life, like, support, being in support of Palestine? Um, I feel like, yeah, definitely, definitely. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've definitely lost opportunities for being in support of Palestine and um yeah just being active and vocal in general yeah I've lost opportunities but at the same time some people appreciate me being vocal so much that I've gotten the opportunity to perform at riots and protests and stuff like that got the opportunity to perform at a riot yeah well okay okay I'm sorry I wish I, I could have recorded that say, no that's dope as fuck but yeah, yeah, I should say a march. I've performed before a march. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's what I say. I wish I could record it, but that sounds raw as hell. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, a riot. I, yeah, it wouldn't make sense for me to be reading poetry yeah. while people are burning stuff up. Yeah. But yeah. It started off as that, but it ended as a riot. You know what I'm saying? They started breaking windows and shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what we came outside and I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> but no okay so we got dancing we got poetry and what else did you oh mm -hmm. event curating event curating yeah, thank you for keeping up you I, I appreciate that that's because i don't what the hell is a curator oh, a okay. curator what is curating an event yeah, yeah 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 so um it's basically just an event coordinator but mm -hmm. with curating it's like specifically for the arts Whereas, like, event cur um, coordinator, um, they might do, like, baby showers, weddings, you know, birthday parties, etc. But curators, they mainly just do stuff related to arts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. How did you get into that? Is it a passion? Is it strictly a job? Is is it difficult? 
Yeah. I'll just ask you like three questions at one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it is, it is <coughs> difficult. Um, I guess like for the most part, like I have a. Uh, I guess the, it's easy for me to get organized and to organize things, mm-hmm. but um, the promoting and pulling people out their house can be exhausting. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I. Yeah, Excuse me. I first started um, organizing shows in 2019. Um, yeah, I just knew of a lot of singers, rappers, poets, and whatnot. And it was hard for us to get into the venues. But I knew my people were talented. And I knew that I could get some spaces that would fuck with us. And, like, if we brought people, it would just be a win. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just started connecting with bookstores and restaurants and different spots that would let me bring um performers and you know take tickets and yeah 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 Mm -hmm. so i started doing that and i was slowly like each event was more money than the last event and um yeah 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 i started doing artist showcases and then um around the time that george floyd was murdered i started doing peace circles and meditation uh situations yeah i started um yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, around the time that George Floyd was murdered and there was, like, marches and riots in Chicago, like, every single day, a lot of people, a lot of activists I know were getting arrested, getting beaten to shit, just, yeah. And some people were going missing. Some people were dying. It was just so sad. You ever been arrested for, for protesting? No, oh, thank okay. God. <laughs> said, thank God. Thank God. Yeah. I'm I was so just sad. saying a poem, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, no, thank God. I'm very fragile. <laughs> I just lock, got my ability to walk again. Right. I am so fragile. Right. I'm a little vegan. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> my, mother, my mother's a vegan. Oh, lit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's so dope. Um, but, yeah, I'm fragile. Um, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I, now I throw poetry slams as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I throw poetry slams. I throw writing workshops. I throw a lot of different things. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. When you when you throw a poetry slam, are you automatically on, on the ticket? Or sometimes do you take a seat, seat seat back? Or what what's that like when you have your own event? Yeah, yeah. Um, For the poetry slams, I don't compete. Um, I'm the host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the host, and I'm the person that people ask questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I take a seat. Um, every now and then, like, if I have a piece that I really want to get out, you know, like... If it's something, you know, political, for example, I will just open the show up with a poem and then, like, mm-hmm. focus on the other people. But, yeah, 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 it's not about me. Um, I got plenty of shows of my own to just, you know, spit my shit at. And um, I also compete in other cities when I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. All right, I got a couple more before I get you up out of here. Okay. Um, give me your favorite part about dancing, about poetry, and about event curating. Oh man, okay, my favorite thing about dancing. Um I really like how sacred dance is because it's an art form that you can't hold on to. You can hold on to an album, you can hold on to your favorite painting, but you can't hold on to anything but the memory of a dancer. You know, um, so I really like that. I like how you can lift people's spirits, make them feel, but and only live in their hearts and memories. So that's one thing. Um, poetry. I like the way that you can explore language and lyricism to tell stories in different ways. And I feel I love the way that uh, the way you talk. Not only is it telling the story that you're, of course, sharing, but it also tells so much about your lineage, your community. You know, just like by the way somebody talk, you can tell like, oh, you know, they're from New York just from the way they talk. Oh, they're Puerto Rican or oh, they're black, you know. Oh, they got a little Port- Pakistani in them, whatever, you know, just from the way they talk. And um, yeah, 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 I love that. And uh, event curating. <laughs> um, what I love about I love asking three questions at one time. No, I, just... <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, I mean, you can do gymnastics in my head trying to memorize. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as curating, I just really love bringing people together. 
Yeah, I love bringing together a lot of different communities. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I have met so many different types of people through the arts and stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get to meet a lot of people like, oh, a lot of dancers that have been wanting to go to poetry stuff but didn't know. Or a lot of people that, you know... Yeah, a lot of people that are into rap shit but want to go to dance events. So, yeah, my curating is a nice way to bring a lot of different people of different backgrounds together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, give me give me your least favorite about all three. You know what I'm saying? I've had a couple of events, and my least favorite part about having an event is the end. You know what I'm saying? Mm. The places that do the cleanup, that's cool. But when I got to clean up, and uh, I'll be ready to go. Oh, yeah. God. So, so give me your least favorite about all three. Okay. Um... Least favorite thing about dance is it's really hard to get booked as a dancer after you're eight, like 40 years old. Um, a lot of people, like once you start to age, you're less valuable. And also like once your body, like, you know, you can't hit the splits and do all the jumps. Yeah, you're less valuable. So, yeah, that's one thing I don't like. Acting, you could be an actor at 80, but don't nobody book 80-year-old dancers for real, for real. Um, poetry. Poetry. Um, I don't like how limited spaces have been for poetry. I feel like it's a lot harder to grow as a poet, a talented poet, than it is like a talented singer. Um, I feel like there's clear, clearer pathways to like grow as a singer and make money versus poetry. Um, and then event curating um i it, promoting is exhausting i get so excited with that shit and um yeah if like you could do all everything right and then the day of the show it could be a snowstorm and then only two people come and you lost you still gotta pay everybody you know so that's the thing i hate usually like my shit turns out well i i have full houses but i've been to events where mm -hmm. um yeah, yeah. I've 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 gone to like snowstorm shows and been like one of three and I was like, damn, I'd hate to be that person. And someday I will be that person. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, for sure. Facts. Well I I definitely I definitely appreciate your time. Before you get up out of here, mm -hmm. would it be too much for me to ask for, for a piece to leave to leave the people with? Oh, okay. Okay, little little little. All right. Oh man. Um I'm trying to think, what should I share? Mm. And at the end, you could just throw mm. out your social medias and we close out. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, all right. <sighs> the midnight tinted lake kissed the sky at sunset, and the two became one while most sleep, with bright twinkles dotting the eyes and faded cloud of swirls crossing the T's. The sweetest dances are resting right above us, so shit, mira. La poesia está aquí, viviendo en nuestro aire, las palabras solo con mí. La poesia está contigo, la poesia está conmigo, la poesia está contigo. Oh, let's come closer and read it. Let's roll down the windows and rest our eyes so we can see it. And the wise wandering wind will carry and airbrush the lyrics onto our skin in the form of goose pimples and nervous grins. So read my goosebumps slow. Like it's a cryptic braille code in a dialect you never felt before, but the letters dip deep into my skin as you sail between the trail of arm hairs. But don't stop. Just keep reading to me while clinging to me. Make my nerves sing while I drip, drip, drip. Sweet holy nectar for you sip. Psychedelic ambrosia to make you trip. A fountain of youth for you to dip your toes in before you dive. My fountains hold no surprise. Just keep me dripping. And for centuries ahead, you'll stay alive. Shit, as long as you keep me dripping, you'll always stay alive. And maybe we'll become one once your saliva is intertwined with all that is mine. But first, you have to decide. Is it going to be your place or mine? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, that piece is called Laid Up with Daddy Long Legs. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> hey, snap it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, again, I'm Sunshine Lombre. Um, I got poetry music on Spotify, SoundCloud, all the things. Um, my Instagram is Lady. And then my last name, L-O-M-B-R-E. And yeah, thank you so much for having me, 290 Mo. <laughs> of course, it was great. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Yes. In a minute, gang.